One of the keys to understanding the action potential in a muscle fiber or in a neuron is to understand how the action potential develops through the action of voltage-gated channels. This video is going to discuss the voltage-gated sodium channels and the voltage-gated potassium channels that are active both in muscle fibers and in neurons. So we're going to start with an electrical situation that's typical of a neuron, not so typical of a muscle fiber, but the concepts would be similar. And here we have a chart that I'm going to first discuss the action potential. And so we have a cell at a resting membrane potential of minus 65 millivolts. And we're going to add on some equilibrium potentials that are typically found in cells. So we would have an equilibrium potential for sodium, or an E and A. of something like plus 70 millivolts. Again, this is the voltage that sodium would like the cell to be at. And an EK of something like minus 70 millivolts. And again, the resting membrane potential is somewhere around minus 65 millivolts. And it's at minus 65 millivolts because of the action of leak channels. So if we look at a typical action potential, we would see a cell that is at the resting membrane potential we have a slight depolarization that allows us to reach threshold. A very quick depolarization as the cell becomes very positive very quickly. A repolarization that is also quickly going to take the cell to become more negative again. And then a hyperpolarization as we go below the resting membrane potential towards EK. And then a slow return to our baseline. And if we look at this chart, one of the things that becomes apparent, apparent is that we have several different inflection points, points in which the chart changes quickly. So for example, here, here, and here. And when we see a rapid change in the electrical properties of a cell, what that should make us consider is that somehow the cell is becoming positive or negative quickly. And the only real way for that to happen is for the ions to move. So these points represent some change in the movement of ions. So what we're going to do is talk about the two voltage-gated channels that underlie this phenomena, the voltage-gated sodium channel and the voltage-gated potassium channel, and we'll try to correlate that with these points. So I've made a handy little chart here, which has our voltage-gated potassium channel and our voltage-gated sodium channel on it. So this is our sodium channel, and this is our potassium channel. And I'm going to add some ions here. So if we think about what's going on in a cell, well, potassium, which I'm depicting by some red cubes, is high within the cell, but relatively low outside the cell. Sodium, which I'm depicting with yellow cubes, is relatively high outside the cell, lower inside the cell. Now the two channels that we have here, the voltage-gated sodium and the voltage-gated potassium, you'll notice have gates on them. And these gates are named after the model, the Hodgkin-Huxley model, where they examined action potentials and came up with a model that explained the action potential. And what they came up with is two different channels, again one that would move sodium, one that moves potassium, that had gates to them. Right? So on the voltage-gated sodium channel we have an M gate which is sensitive to voltage changes and an H gate which is the inactivation gate. And this sort of gate is somewhat rare. It's not found on all channels. Right? Voltage, -gated, volts, voltage gates are more common. On the sodium channel, or I should say the potassium channel, we just have a voltage gate. And these are named M H and N. So we're going to start out at the beginning at the resting membrane potential. And at the resting membrane potential the voltage gates are closed and the inactivation gate is open. And so at this point ions cannot move because we have both of our voltage gates open. I should say closed. 
At threshold, when the cell becomes slightly depolarized, we are going to open up our voltage-gated gates. And so what that means is the M gate and the N gate, which are sensitive to the cell becoming too positive, are going to open. A key difference between the M gate and the N gate is that the M gate can open fairly quickly, the N gate opens more slowly. So I often think of these as a gate that is well oiled and can open quickly. The end gate is squeaky and opens more slowly. They will both be activated at threshold, but one will open first. So what we're going to do at threshold is the M gate is going to open first. And what will occur is that positive charges will begin to move into the cell. And so sodium ions will move into the cell causing the cell to be more positive. If we think about what's happening on our action potential, we have reached threshold and arrived at our first inflection point where the M gate and the N gate are triggered. The M gate is opening first, positive charge is moving into the cell, and the cell is now becoming depolarized. The next thing we want to do is talk about this tip-top point, and here we're going to have two things occur. First, the H gate is going to close. This is the inactivation gate, and this gate closes essentially in, in, in a time-sensitive manner. So as the M gate opens, there's a certain period of time after which the H gate will close. So that closes. And what that means is it's no longer possible for sodium to enter the cell. At the same time, the end gate will open up. Remember, it's also voltage sensitive, but it takes longer to open up. So it was activated here, but is now opening up, and so potassium ions start to leave the cell. And of course, as potassium ions leave the cell, the cell becomes more negative. And so essentially, the cell will repolarize back to the resting membrane potential. The permeability for sodium, excuse me, for potassium through this channel is so high that we pass the resting membrane potential and in fact go down to E K. Right, so we can go below the resting membrane potential. This is called hyperpolarization. Now, you'll notice that as we go past the resting membrane potential, we are now below threshold, and we are below the point at which these voltage gates will remain open. So they are voltage sensitive, which means they will open if the cell becomes more positive. They'll also close if the cell becomes too negative. So what's going to happen is that as the cell becomes negative, the N gate and the M gate will both close. So no ions are going to move at this point. And as sodium and potassium do not move, what happens over time is the leak channels allow the cell to slowly go back to the resting membrane potential. Now there's two other things that we need to consider. The first is that I've taken a lot of potassium out of the cell, right? So I started out with relatively high potassium, and you can see now we've kicked some of that potassium out, so potassium levels are falling in the cell. And I've had a buildup of sodium within the cell, right? I had relatively low levels of sodium, now I have higher levels of sodium inside the cell. Uh, we can't allow this to continue, because the action potential depends on a separation of potassium and sodium so that we have high potassium in a cell, low sodium in a cell. So what we have to do is kick out the sodium, and bring in some potassium. And we do that through the sodium potassium ATPase, also known as the sodium potassium pump. So eventually we would reset and get back to where we started through the actions of that pump. And of course we need to use ATP for this to work. The other thing that's going to occur is that once the, the M and N gates close, on the voltage gated sodium channel, over time the H gate will go from its closed state 
being open again. And there's a time factor that it's a certain amount of time that is needed to pass before that can happen. And that leads to a situation called refractory, the refractory period, which we'll talk about a little bit later in class. So again, as you sit down and thinking of, think about voltage-gated channels, right, remember that what we're really talking about is a set pattern in which gates are opening or closing. Depending on which gate is opened or closed, ions can flow across the membrane, either into the cell or out of the cell. And if we think about the fact that these ions are carrying charges, that means that the cell is either going to become more positive or more negative. Thank you.